Hi and welcome back to my little home shop. Now today's video is going to be a little quickie and it's going to be about two different subjects. First is going to be about drinking coke and the other one is going to be about why files need to cut dry. So let's start with the coke. In our last little quickie video I opened a can of coke because I was making a little joke about the urban legend that tends to indicate that coke will dissolve anything uh, just as rapidly as sulfuric acid will. And that always makes me chuckle when I hear it. But on the back side of that, a lot of you remembered that I was uh, fighting with the onset of type 2 diabetes and were quite worried to see me drink a good big gulp of that can of coke. Well you're right and I do not drink soft drinks or sugar soft drinks anymore and my health has improved greatly. Now my blood sugar a couple of years ago was well above 7 and now it's around 6.1 quite constantly now for about a year and a half so the blood sugar is well under control uh, with diet and proper uh, life habits. So that's looking quite good. And no, I don't drink Coke. I just did that for the video. And it did taste great, though I must admit. Now, the real objective of this video was to answer a question from a guy in France, Michel Bouchera, who asks about the whys and wheres of uh, oil on files. How come we use cutting oils for milling, drilling and turning, but we cannot use oil on a file? So let's take a look at that. I guess the best way to answer the question would be to say that files cut better dry because files are designed to cut dry. But that's a little simplistic, so let's try and explain a little more. Cutting with files is a lot like learning how to walk. You learn how to cut with a file. It's a lot like learning to ride a bike. You learn how to ride a bike. Now, when you learn to walk, you don't read a manual. It's a shoot and miss situation. And your body and mind learn to walk as you go along. So you see what works you find out what doesn't and you keep going. It's not an intellectual thing. You cannot learn to walk by reading a book. And anyways, you're too young to do that at that point in time. And walking is a balancing act. So it's something that involves a lot of senses and is very complex. But even at that, a young child, a baby, can learn to walk. Now, Riding a bike, the same thing. It's something we do later on in life, uh, but it's still the same shoot and miss kind of thing. And sooner or later, your parent has to let go of the seat and let you go. And yes, you probably will fall or crash into the cedar hedge or something like that. But seeing as your parents are responsible people, they've chosen an area where that crash won't be too severe. But it's still a balancing act and you learn by shoot and miss and you interpret the information and it is very complex. It's something that's alive and moving, but you learn how to do it at a young age. I mean, most people learn how to ride bikes when they're five or six years old. And filing is similar in that you can read manuals and watch videos about filing and not be able to file because sooner or later you have to pick up a file and you have to start filing and you have to assimilate that information and learn what works, what doesn't work. I mean, I can tell you that filing very hard material is not possible, but you won't really understand what's going on between the file and the hard material until you've tried it and that physical transfer of information from the file to you into your brain well teaches you what's right and wrong and how to go about it 
what angle to hold the file at, how files cut with certain materials and certain other materials, and so on and so forth. So filing is, like walking and riding a bike, a balancing act. Files are made to cut, but they depend on the capacity of human beings to adjust almost naturally to them to get them to cut properly. Now, before we go any further, uh, I think it's important to say that if you are going to understand what's coming up, it's best to understand how to file properly and how chips are produced and how cutting edges affect chip orientation. So I will suggest, and we'll get it all out of the way right away, that if you go to my website and uh, head over to the page 2, uh, scroll down to Lesson 5, uh, Part 2, well that's the lesson about files and filing. If you head over to page 3 and scroll down in the orange section, you'll find two videos about chips, speeds, and feeds, part one and part two. And if you stay on that same page three and look over in the green section, you'll find a little quickie about lathe tool uh, cutting uh, surfaces or cutting angles, okay, setting up a lathe tool in the green section on page three. So take a look at that if you want to understand a little more about what's going on. For us, let's get back to our files. Now, a file tooth has a positive cutting face. A cutting face is the face on which the chip rides up or slides up onto. Cutting files have a positive cutting face. Here's a close-up picture of one where you can see that angle. Now, that means that a file when cutting wants to bite into the part and well that's a good thing why because files are handheld tools if i had a file that had a neutral or positive cutting surface angle i would never be able to bear down hard enough on it to make it cut and that is one big reason that explains why files have to cut dry when we're on the lathe, on the mill, or on the drill press, we can cut with positive angled tools for certain types of materials, and in other situations we can use neutral or negative cutting angled tools. And why can we do that? Well, they aren't handheld operations. We have the mechanical advantages of moving tables with lead screws and rack and pinion gears to make it that I can force the tool into the workpiece and produce chips that way. And even if there's a lot of force that wants to push the tool back, in the case of example a negative surfaced cutting tool, well I can compensate for that because the machine is made to take that kind of stress. Files, well they're handheld, I just cannot apply enough pressure and that is why the teeth have positive cutting angles. Now, what is another difference between a mill, a lathe, a drill press, and a file? Well, it is the number of teeth. Now, okay, on a mill I can have several teeth, but in reality there's only one or two teeth on the mill cutting at any given time. On the lathe, well, I have only one cutting lip usually doing the work. On the drill press for drilling, I only have two. So that means that there is small, a small amount of contact between the tool on those machine tools and the part that I'm cutting. Now it is the amount of contact between the tool and the part that determines how much force is going to be required to make that tool penetrate the surface of the part. Now there's other little variables, but principally or basically that's it. A file has thousands of teeth. Now they are quite small, but they still represent, once added all together, they represent a huge surface of contact. And if a file had a neutral surface or cutting angle, or even a negative one would be even worse, but let's say just a neutral, I would never, never be able to bear down on it strongly enough to make it penetrate. Now if the file had only one tooth, 
and it was very small, well then it would be easy to make it penetrate even if I had a negative uh, angle on it. But that's not the case. There is thousands of teeth. And that means that when I push the file into the part, a portion of the fact that the file can lift the chip comes from that positive angle that is pushing the file or pulling the file into the part as I am cutting. It's important to note that cutting oil isn't a lubricating oil. No, if you take engine oil and use it on a tap to tap a hole in a piece of steel, well you are more than likely going to break your tap. Why? Well that lubricant is not helping the tool to bite in. It's actually permitting it to slide and wedge itself in the hole. It's not helping at all. So we don't want to use an oil that lubricates very well. And that is why cutting oils are more what I call detergent oils. They lubricate somewhat, very little, but they more than anything else clean the surfaces and permit the chips to separate in that way. So, so really it is a, not a pure lubricant. And why is that important? Well, when a chip starts its life, it's starting to be formed, we have several phases. And the first one, and really go see the Chips and Speeds video if this doesn't ring a bell, the first one is the compression. And the tooth that attacks the part has to compress a certain amount of material. Now that compression produces heat, and after a certain amount of compression, well, the resistance is too great and the chip starts to flow. Once the chip starts to flow, it creates different tensions on the inside and the outside and gives it a curl and separates from the tool. That's really the basis of cutting. But, and it's important to understand, that at the very start of chip formation, well, a lot of energy is required. Once the chip starts to flow, things get a lot easier. So, when I'm on the lathe or the mill, and the tooth of my cutter, let's say on the lathe, attacks the part, the pressure goes way up. And that's often why the tool will break at the very start of a cut. So the pressure goes way up, or the amount of energy required uh, goes way up. And produces a chip, starts to flow, and then goes down. The machine is a machine tool that is rigid, and as I mentioned, it gives me a mechanical advantage. So I can make that happen. Now, on the file, I have the same problem. At the start, the teeth, as they engage the part, will require a lot of downward force to form that chip and not just slide off it and ride up. Now, once the chip is starting to be formed, well then the chip flows and that cutting force is reduced. And that means that I can have a lot of teeth producing chips as they go through the part to compensate for the teeth coming into the part that need a lot of downward pressure. So the, the teeth that are cutting are pulling down and the teeth that are starting to cut are pushing up. The problem here is if I use a lubricant, that first phase of penetration is almost impossible to make happen. The file will slide instead of biting. Now, once it starts to slide, well, it rides on top of the part and the teeth that aren't engaged aren't pulling down. So what do I end up with? Well, a sequence of teeth arriving in the part that just ride up onto it and cannot cut. I mean, once a tooth is not cutting, it is pushing upwards, okay? So it wants to get out, and that means that the file can't bite in. And that is the main reason. Now, we cut dry because I hear it. Why don't we use cutting oil because it doesn't lubricate very much? Any lubrication will really deteriorate your capacity to engage the tool into the part. I mean, this is a handheld tool, and we aren't super people, so that means that we have to apply force that we can. And I think that you've probably noticed, and maybe you should do this, just try it. Put oil on your file, get a part, try and cut it. 
But before you do that, try and cut it without the oil. And you'll see that it is phenomenally easier because, as I mentioned at the very start, filing is a balancing act. I said it's like walking and going on a bike. You're balancing the force required to start the chip with the force that the tool is exerting between the part by pulling down because of that positive angle on the teeth. Now, I mentioned earlier that filing is an instinctive thing to learn, like walking and riding a bike. You can be explained how to do it, but ultimately you have to acquire the body knowledge of how it works, how it feels, what's going on, to really become good at it. So what that means is that you have to file, you have to try different things, and yes, you might muck up a few files learning, but you will be better for it later on. So learn by observing. Learn by, yes, being told what happens. So go see those other videos and, and read and watch other things. But ultimately, you have to do it and feel the vibration and feel the file biting in or not biting in to really know if you're having the right angle, the right speed of stroke, how certain materials cut differently from certain others, how certain shapes of files cut differently from certain others, how certain geometry of teeth cut differently from certain others. It's just something you have to learn. And you're probably going to get pretty good at filing pretty quick because you're going to do what most people do. You're going to break it down to two or three or maybe four go-to files and you're going to get very good with those files. So don't despair, things will look up. So basically filing is something you have to work at and you have to get used to and never, never, never lubricate your file. So Michelle, I hope this answers your question and wasn't too much of a long and drawn out explanation. I hope that nobody fell asleep during this little quickie. And well, to everyone else, have fun, be safe, very important, and happy machining.